Hey there, thanks for stopping back on by my channel. My name is Evan Edinger, and today I join you from Green Park, right next to Buckingham Palace. Uh, there's no way I could get anywhere near there today. Didn't realize today is a very important cultural day. You'll see the entire time I'm filming, there'll be people walking across shots. Uh, they're currently on their way to leave flowers as close as they can get to Buckingham Palace right over that way, uh, because Elizabeth II has just recently passed away, and they're carting her coffin all around London this week. That is something that's happening, so if you wish to go see the coffin, see her, you have the right to do so. You have to wait 48 hours in a 10-mile queue, but you can do this thing. Uh, this is something that I, kind of blows my mind. It wasn't something I was really expecting. Uh, but I, I got some comments last week from people saying they were very disappointed in me for not uploading my opinion on the passing of the Queen. It's a bit of a murky one. I do have opinions on it, but whether or not I'm legally allowed to share them is a bit weird. You know, I, I did leave the U.S., land of the free, home of the brave, where we are drilled into us since childhood, you know, some very strong brainwashing. You gotta be nationalistic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And in Spanish, prometo fidelidad, arraba de la, it's crazy, really crazy. But in the UK, that doesn't happen. You don't really have to do any of these crazy, stupid, nationalistic pledges or songs all the time. It's few and far between. And so people are a bit more, I don't know, able to think for themselves, you would think here. But that being said, when you want to become a British citizen as an immigrant, you actually do have to make a similar oath to one that is done in the US every single day as a child. In fact, sure, when you decide to be a citizen, you do have to swear an oath of allegiance to the UK. That's fair enough. You know, if, if you're trying to become a citizen, it would make sense to swear allegiance to the country to be like, are you in this for reals? Yes. But as a recent-ish addition, you also have to swear fealty to the crown, to the Queen Elizabeth II and her heirs for all eternity. If you've seen my citizenship video, this is what I had to do. I, Evan Edinger, swear by almighty God that on becoming a British citizen, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to her majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. And I find that a bit messed up. Uh, why? Well. For the most part, it means that immigrants aren't really allowed to have opinions against the monarchy. In order to become a citizen, you have to swear an oath to protect the queen and her heirs for, for all eternity, almost like that's your ticket in. British citizens, normal British citizens, the ones that are born and raised here, do not have to make this promise, do not have to make this oath. They are legally allowed to have an opinion. There's so many people I know that are anti-monarchist, that are Republican, lowercase r, in which they believe that this is a very outdated notion to have this king and queen sort of thing still going on in the 21st century. Maybe you can keep the tradition, but not necessarily for taxpayer dollars or pounds. But the fact that as an immigrant, I'm not necessarily allowed to have this opinion because I had to swear an oath is a bit bizarre. As much as Americans love bragging about their freedom of speech all over the place, it is something that is they, they, they have every right to be proud of, you know. The fact that, I don't know if you've seen the news this week, but a man shouted at the car that Prince Andrew was in, you're a sick old man, and got arrested. Got arrested? For shouting at a, a, a monarch's brother who's a alleged pedophile? Okay, um, what world do I live in? That's some, that's some crazy sh Especially because anytime you try and say the monarchy should be not a thing anymore, people go, oh, it's just, it's just a thing. It's not like a real thing. They don't actually own power. It's all just for show. A, oh, alleged. really? So, but, but you can't say anything alleged. against a ruler or their alleged. siblings, or you get arrested. Yeah. Uh, there was, this isn't just a one-off case, by the way. It's, it's such an interesting dichotomy between the U.S. and the U.K., uh, and it, it makes me really upset that this is the, the freedoms that we have, because as much as people might say, like, oh, I wish we had more freedoms in the U.K., I always go like, oh, you want to use hate speech? Like, I am never usually affected by the sort of laws that are against free speech in the U.K. I, I do find it a bit upsetting that there are certain things you can't even joke about without risking going to jail. But the fact that you can't even make a passing comment to an incredibly 0.001% uh, rich ruling class person without being arrested it's, it puts a bad taste in my mouth. And so, um, no, I don't really support the monarchy. Not really, but if I had to say I did because otherwise I'd get kicked out of the country, what kind of country do I live in? You know, it's really made me uh, question a lot of things, to be very honest with you. I've heard so many interesting NPC conversations walking around this area, just old couples going, oh, I've got my Charles and Diana mug. Oh, I don't have that one. I have the Silver Jubilee mug. 
they, they're treating these, these people like they're Pokemon, like these experiences of the, the, these rich people who get to experience all the extreme wealth that uh, we as taxpayers are able to give to them. They're collectibles, collectible items. Who's excited for the next edition where we get to spend billions of dollars changing our currency until the next monarch inevitably dies because they are human beings. I do think that with the queen's passing, we probably have a much higher chance now of the dissolution of the monarchy. She was such a steadfast stone. Everyone relied on her as, you know, sure we had some bad prime ministers and bad governments throughout the years, but we always had that queen. Now that she's gone, I don't think people like Charles that much. You've seen season four of The Crown, right? Or I don't know, lived through it? I know a lot of that stuff's made up, but still. Just an interesting Britain that we all currently live in. And it's just, I'm not, this isn't scripted or anything, as you can obviously tell. I just thought this was something I wanted to share and talk about at this current moment in time. I'd much rather the society in which I live in have a governmentally, constitutionally protected freedom of speech rather than, oh, it depends. Also weird that the entire UK is expected to shut down because the Queen has died. Sure, it is, it is good to mourn for someone that you feel like in your parasocial relationship with her, you knew. She was your bestie. She was your grandma, as they say. But yet we shouldn't be discouraging, I don't know, cancer treatments from going on on that Monday and just canceling loads of people's hospital appointments and telling people not to cycle in honor of the Queen's passing. I don't know, normal people have jobs. Normal people still have to get to their jobs, whether that be cycling or not. It's just, like I said, a very weird time in Britain right now. And I find it incredibly bizarre, especially because I don't know what everybody else is thinking. I'm here sharing this opinion, which is gonna be met with loads of flack because I'm not sucking royalty, dick. And I'm also not completely telling everybody the royalty is horrible. Just, you can't be in the middle in this, this day and age. I'm not in the middle, but you can't be not extremely polarized. It's just not allowed. I do find the practice of people worshiping the royals and their families very weird. I feel like we have that idol worship in the US as well, but it's for people like the Kardashians. And you know what? If you wanna spend your entire life just finding out what people do in the tabloids, whether that be Kardashians or whether that be uh, people who were born into a system in the UK to have extreme wealth, okay. But to, to force it on other people and make everybody have to pay tax money to, to make their wealth even bigger because tradition? Sounds a bit silly. We've canceled a lot of things in the past due to tradition. I don't think that's a good excuse. Obviously it's a time of mourning for the nation and that's what they're trying to do, but they shouldn't necessarily be trying to completely bring everyone's lives to a st standstill. Obviously it's important for people to mourn the loss of the queen. I do think that we should, you know, be respectful of that, but also we should also have the right to not be respectful of that. All right, I am in the sun. I need to turn, there we go. So I am interested in hearing your thoughts, but whether you're British or not, I'd love to hear your opinion on everything that's happened basically this week, how you think it will play out in the future, and whether or not this freedom of speech thing you think is gonna be a couple one-offs, or we're gonna be hearing that a lot more often. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next Sunday. Goodbye.